Uh, I have only three short poems, one of which I wrote, the other two are written by others, and I'll just mix it in with anecdote, which Gordon said we could do. On uh, September 9th, I was in California visiting my mother, who turned 91, with my brother. Two days before, we went to Anza Borrega Desert, one of the most beautiful, largest deserts in California. It's a state desert. And what I remember from that desert was the silence, the incredible silence, the trips that we took out under the moonlight and stars. We came back on the night of September 10th, and the morning of September 11th, I heard commotion in the living room, and there was my brother and my brother watching something incredible that reverberates to this day. It took about two weeks for me to get a plane back to New York, and I went back to Ground Zero, got as close as I could at Chamber Street, and saw the screens with uh, photos of people who were missing and messages from friends and relatives. I went to my firehouse in Park Slope, and uh, who, among the first responders who died in the, uh, on, those, on that day, there was a poem, and this poem is, uh, Wikipedia says it's anonymous, I copied it down, but it was on the walls of many firehouses and flashed across the internet because it resonated for so many. It doesn't have a title. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. The second poem is by Rose Bernal, who wrote 11 poems on the subject of 9-11, and she said she went back there many times. Uh, this is one of those 11 poems. It's called Eight Years Later. Early September day is still sunny, gentle, as if a whiff of something must be caught. The delicacy of white roses and more of Peruvian lilies harmonizing at my dinner table. Not the ease with which we swallowed that repeated acrobatic act, that second take making sure our eyes would not deceive, nor the mind-numbing incredulity of the heavy days that followed. And finally, this is the one poem that I wrote about 9-11, and this is based on an anecdote that a friend told me about about two weeks after 9-11. She worked in the Federal Reserve, and the people who worked in the Federal Reserve were told to stay in their buildings and not leave because it was safer there, and they did, and it was safer. Some stayed in the vaults below ground, and some stayed in the uh, upper floors um, behind the thick windows, which through which they could only see the shadows and the ash. When she left at 3.30 in the afternoon, she was given permission, she saw the man standing on the corner. He was the fruit vendor who had been selling fruit for 15 years. He was the Afghan man. He was trembling, holding his fruit, but she trudged on because she was afraid. And that image haunted me for the next couple of weeks, and I wrote this poem, The Afghan Man. The story of this man, the Afghan man, lies in believing he was standing right there, frozen in white ash, just standing and staring as the buildings fell like snow. He sold fruit on the corner every day for 15 years. They bought an apple or an orange, always on the go. No one knew his name. No one ever asked. Maybe he's still standing where they'll never know. The debris is being cleared away. It will be a high rent district soon, and all will be as it once was long ago, long ago. But is the Afghan man still standing, white as ash, eyes aglow? Is he the statue or the gardener, the one to harvest in the snow? Thank you.